of the online devotional. It's a pleasure to have you. Bona Sifiwe. Welcome so that we can continue encouraging ourselves as we look at the scriptures. We have been looking at uh, success lessons from the life and the times of King Hezekiah of Judah. The 12th king of Judah. And we have so far looked at uh, Part 1 and 2, in part 1, we said that uh, in order for us to be successful, and if we are to learn anything from King Hezekiah, then we must do whatever it is that we must do wholeheartedly. We must employ our whole heart. When we put, your, when we put our heart to whatever we do, then that is one of the key components of success. And then in, in part two, we considered uh, having our priorities right. And so we learn from King Hezekiah that uh, in order for us to be successful in whatever we do, we must have our priorities right. And King Hezekiah had his priorities right. He knew what needed to be done first. And his first priority was uh, going back to the heart of worship. And so he repaired, he opened the temple doors, which had been closed, and he opened the, the, the door so that the people can come back again and worship. He consecrated the, uh, he asked the Levites and the priests to consecrate themselves, and he moved on to lead the people in worship. Some of the things that had been abandoned, burnt sacrifices, observance of the Day of Atonement, observance of the Passover, all these things were reinstituted. And so the second lesson that we learned is that we must have our priorities right. And our priority is worship. We must make God central in whatever it is that we do. Yes, remember Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 tells us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else that we desire is going to be added to us. And so now today we are going to be looking at uh, the third part and in this third part we are going to be looking at strategic preparedness and we are going to be focusing on the text of second chronicles chapter 32 verses 1 to 5 yes so number one we must do whatever it is that we do wholeheartedly number two we must have our priorities right central no, na gaino ginya akoro alivine na gatagateine 
ka mifago itu kogo no ginya to he gai mweke uria we wake so that is what hezekiah did and then then number 3 is that we must be strategic and we must prepare ourselves strategically so that is what we are going to explore that in order for us to be successful not only must we put god first and must we we must not only do whatever it is that we do with our whole hearts but we must be strategic in our preparation and so somebody said that success is where opportunity meets preparedness so we need to prepare whatever it is that we want to achieve we need preparation for it but that preparation must be strategic and that is what we are going to be considering today and so don't just prepare be strategic in your preparation yes there must be a plan yes don't just say that you are planning yes be strategic in that planning in your preparation you and i need to be strategic and so we are going to be considering that and how it is that we can learn from uh, from uh, king hezekiah on being strategic first of all we look at the text of uh, second chronicles 32 and verse 1 which is very telling and this is what the bible says that after all that hezekiah had so faithfully done sennacherib king of assyria came and invaded judah he laid siege to the fortified cities thinking to conquer them for himself after all that hezekiah had done after opening the temple after repairing the the doors after putting the levites and uh, the priests back after leading the people and the entire congregation in worship after even observing passover that had been abandoned for a while during his father's reign after he, all he had done for god how does god how does god repay him the bible says that king sennacherib of assyria invaded judah and so what we need to understand first and foremost is that the fact that we are doing something for god the fact that we are worshiping god the fact that we are putting god first does not insulate us against the attacks of the enemy so that is something that we need to sink into our heads gukorwa ati twethini wa mufango wa ngai na gutweka ati ne turarutira ngai wira ogwo tikuga ati shaitani dagutukirira no so we had better learn from king hezekiah so it is important that you and, and i understand that even when we are working very hard for god the enemy is also going to attack us that does not mean that the enemy is not going to attack and the attack may come from whatever quarter it may be financial crisis it may be a relationship crisis eh? so the fact that you have given yourself to the work of the lord does not mean that you are insulated against the attacks of the enemy please hear me and hear me well and let us take this text to heart that after all that hezekiah had so faithfully done he was still attacked judah was still attacked and so i want to give you some encouragement maybe you are here and you have given yourself to god's work you have even given your tithes you have even given your time and your resources you are involved in god's work you visit the sick you probably sing in the choir or you lead in worship ministry or whatever it is that you do that does not mean that you will not be attacked by the enemy 
And that is something that we must know. So don't worry when people say, eh, if you are giving yourself to the work of the Lord, then why is this happening to you? Refer those kind of questions and people who say, why has God allowed this to happen to you? Refer, refer them to Second Chronicles chapter 32 and verse 1. After all Hezekiah had done, and please find time and read the entire text of Second Chronicles chapter 29, chapter 30, and chapter 31. Because all that shows how Hezekiah gave himself to the work of the Lord and how he put worship, he put the entire nation of Israel back to the root of worship. Yet, having done all that, he was still attacked by the Assyrian army. So it is important that we understand that. We are not giving ourselves to the work of the Lord and we are not giving God priority that he deserves so that the enemy will not attack. The enemy will, con will still attack, attack us. And that is what we need to understand. And then we can be able to learn the lessons here. So because remember we said that when he came to the throne, there was already a crisis that was brewing. The Assyrians were preparing themselves to attack. But now, here we now uh, look at how he dealt with this point number three. And this point number three is about a strategic preparedness. Because he was prepared. He prepared himself. And we must, we must be prepared. And in our, pre, in, in our preparation, we must be strategic. So what, what does he do? Quickly, four things that Hezekiah did that we can learn from is that, number one, uh, he sought expert opinion. In verse 3, of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 32, we are told that he consulted his officials and the military staff. And that is one of the strategy that we must employ. We must seek counsel. We are not know-it-all. Kwe maudwe na nietutoi. Na no ginyatoeve, no ginyatoli ya doalia moe maudu. Kulia do moe maudu idwe tutoi. And so the fact that we are saved and spirit-filled, that does not mean that we are, we are experts in every field. So it is important for us to acknowledge where we are deficient, and it is important to acknowledge that God has gifted people differently. And we need to tap into those gifts that God has given other people. So... Are there engineers in the congregation? Let us use them when we need engineering. Are there doctors in the congregation? Let us use them. Are there carpenters or whatever? They are, the, the, the body of Christ is endowed with all these experts. And it is important that we use them in men, even in ministry. And even at our, at our own personal level, it is important that we engage people who have a broader and greater understanding. Yes, so it is important to pray. Yes, it is important to commit things to God. Yes, but it is also important to seek expert opinion. If you are not feeling well, yes, it is important that you come and say, ask the pastor to say a prayer for you. But that does not mean that you cannot go and seek medical advice. That is the point. So, what uh, King Hezekiah did is that he sought the expert opinion on the crisis at hand. And the crisis at hand was military operation. So he consulted his officials and the military staff. And that is what we must learn from King Hezekiah. We must consult because after all, it is the Bible that says that in Proverbs 15:22 that plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. So seek counsel. So are you feeling unwell? 
seek a doctor's opinion. That does not mean that you will not pray, but seek expert counsel. Do you want to put up a house? Look for an architect. Yes. Or an engineer or whoever is in construction. Look for experts because they are experts in the field. Yes. And you, we cannot pretend that we know it all. Being spirit-filled is one thing, but being spirit-filled will not make you an, an engineer if, for example, engineering is required. So we must seek expert opinion, and that is very, very important. So number two, he became, he, he became practical. He diverted the flow of water. A large force of men assembled, and they blocked all the springs and the stream that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water, they said. So what does he do here? He is strategic in his defense. He is not going to allow his enemies to enjoy the abundance of water that was for the people of Israel. And most of the time, the devil would like to use what we have. The devil uses what we have against us. So we cannot be able to be feeding the enemy. And that is the strategy that King Hezekiah employed. He cut off the springs of water so that when the people, when the Assyrians came to lay siege on Jerusalem and the cities surrounding Jerusalem, they were not going to be having free water. No. So in the same way, we must guard and we must safeguard the benefits that the Lord has given us. We cannot allow the devil to use the very benefits and the very blessings that God has given us. So he will use us. He will use. The devil, if allowed, will use those resources against us. And that is what uh, King Hezekiah was not ready to do. So he diverted the flow of water so that when the enemies finally came, they were going to have trouble uh, having the water. So the, 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 that thing that he did is that uh, he repaired the walls. Yes, the defense. Because in any warfare, in any warfare, we, uh, defense is more important than offense. So if you have weapons of, uh, if we have weapons of uh, attack, but you don't have weapons for defense, then what are you doing? So the strategy is to strengthen the defense. And so here we find uh, King Hezekiah. He worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall. And building towers on it, he built another wall outside that one and reinforced the supporting terraces of the city of David. So that is what he did. He, he repaired the walls. And what we must do is, is that we must interrogate ourselves and look for our points of weakness. And we must ask ourselves which areas of our defense need uh, reinforcement? In which areas are our walls of defense broken? In which areas do we find uh, that uh, the enemy is able to get through to us quickly? Wh which part of your life is a broken wall? Is it your management of resources? Do you continually find yourself in debt? Maybe that is a wall that needs to be repaired. Is it your relationships that are having trouble? Maybe you need to repair those walls of broken relationships. So what King Hezekiah did is that he repaired, he repaired the walls that were broken. And not only did he repair, he reinforced, he built another wall so that it would be uh, very difficult for the enemy to come and attack him. But number four, and uh, finally, is that he improved on his weaponry. In verse five, we are told that he also made large numbers of weapons and shields. And this is now for attack. He prepared himself. And we must understand and appreciate 
that our weapons uh, of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God, pulling down strongholds. And so we must know that our weapon of attack is the word of God. So the question is, do we have this arsenal of the word of God? Because it is the word of God that is going to help us to attack. And so those are the things, that is the strategy that was employed by King Hezekiah. He looked for expert counsel. He diverted the water, meaning that he was not ready to have the enemies use their res uh, the resources of uh, the people of Judah to attack. But he also repaired the broken places and he increased his weaponry. How is your knowledge of scripture? Because that is what we use to attack. So we need to continually increase our arsenal. We need to continually increase our stock of weapons. And our weapons, the weapons of our warfare, are spiritual. They are the word of God. So these are the things that we must do. So we must prepare and prepare ourselves strategically. Not just prepare, but be strategic. Yes, and when we do this, then we are on our way to success. So number one, work at whatever you do wholeheartedly. Number two, have your priorities right. And number three, be strategic in your preparation. And being spiritual and putting God first does not mean that you will not prepare. We must prepare strategically. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. We thank you because of the example of King Hezekiah, and we thank you because of the lessons that we continue to learn, and we pray that you will help us to be strategic in our preparation and in our planning. Because after all, planning is ours. And it is you who comes to bless our plans. And so we pray that we are not going to be found lazy, but we are going to be strategic in our preparedness. Hear us, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very much. That is all the time that we had for this particular devotional. So let us continue reflecting on the life and the times of King Hezekiah, and there are lessons to be learned. Yes. So far, three of them, wholeheartedness, right priorities, and strategic preparedness. I look forward to meeting you in our next episode as we look at the fourth part in the success strategies of King Hezekiah. Until then, May the Lord bless you.